And now, let's join Ace Broadcaster Mamode Akuga as he takes us inside the Niger Delta. Hello out there and welcome to the program. It's Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Niger's oil rich region. I'm your regular host, Mamode Akuga. Our first report into this package is a tragic account of the murder of a young man whose vital parts were ripped off by a ritual killer in Sagbama local government area of Bios Estate. In our next report, we take a look at events trailing the recent protest carried out by Ijo Youths culminating in the suspension of the IYC president, Comrade Peter Igbifa. Moving on, we bring you an update on the Olu of Worries tool following an official announcement of a date for the coronation of Prince Sholai Miku as the 21st Olu of Wari Kingdom. We will, in the course of the program, bring you solutions preferred by participants at a financial cooperative leadership conference in Yanagoa to deal with economic recession in the South-South geopolitical zone and other parts of the country. And finally, into this package is a report on how the Michael Amadi Owu Foundation, a non-profit organization based in the Niger Delta, celebrated this year's Children's Day with orphans and other less privileged children. Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Niger's oil rich region will be back after this timeout. Don't go away. Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, determined to make a difference. Welcome back. It's Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Niger's oil rich region. The desperate search for wealth by all means necessary is turning some Nigerians into monsters dealing in the murder and harvesting of human body parts either for sale or for ritual purposes. Such was the case recently in Sagbama, headquarters of Sagbama local government area of Bios Estate, when Wisdom Odier, a young man in his 20s, was gruesomely murdered and some of his vital organs harvested allegedly by a roommate who he thought was his friend. This is a cottage hospital built by the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, in Erowa, Isoko South local government area of Delta State. After completion, they failed to equip it and subsequently abandoned it. It has now been overtaken by grasses. The NDDC also built a similar facility in Sagbama town, Sagbama local government area of Biles Estate. It was supposed to be a cottage hospital built by the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. But just like so many NDDC projects spread across the Niger Delta region, this is also an abandoned NDDC project. In fact, it had been occupied by several people looking for accommodation, most of them forced here as a result of flooding in the community. But amongst them, we have now had some other people who've turned out to be hardened criminals engaged in ritual murder. It was in this building that Wisdom Odie was murdered in his sleep, allegedly by one Mr. Okweburo Averusuo, who hit him in the head with a pistol. According to His Royal Highness Moses Magwisa, the Amananawe of Sagbama, a neighbor who suspected the activities of Mr. Okweburo, alerted the local vigilante men who assisted in arresting him, after which the police was then invited to take over the case. After killing him, he took the foam away, we were using water to wash the room, and he was going out with a paper bag. So the boss suspected him. And you can see a blood stain from the room to this area. The boy now quickly called another boy with his phone. I'm alone, I can't grab this boy. I'm suspecting this boy. So come quickly, you know police better than me, call police. So they now call the police. So they now grab this boy, send him to the police station. After murdering the victim, the suspect had allegedly hid the dismembered body parts in different places in a nearby bush. The head was dumped here. The chest part of the body was dumped there. Then the hands, that is the hands like this, mm -hmm. was dumped here. They now threw the foam on the other, the side. other side of the bush. So, Your Highness, the, the foam it was also recovered. Yes. Recovered. Was it blood stained? Yes. Bloody, not blood stained. Bloody. The neck was not recovered. Then the private part was not recovered. 
and uh, the, these muzzles the, the hat was, was not recovered. Hat. This both uh, this ones on this side was not recovered, and the hat yes, was, not was not there. Upon his arrest, the suspect, Mr. Akwekboru, retrieved the body parts in nylon bags. The remains of Wisdom Mudia has since been deposited in a mortuary in Yanagoa. When inside the Niger Delta visited Igbide in Isoko South local government area of Delta State to speak with the family of the victim, his father, Mr. Emmanuel Udia, who was grief-stricken, could not grant us an interview. However, a spokesman for the family, Austin Obukelio, said their son, Wisdom Udia, had earlier been invited by Mr. Okwekburu to Sagbama, where he wanted to dispose of his motorbike. Two weeks back, the boy came to sell his Okada because he's doing it on higher portion, uh, that is a uh, balance and take. He has paid up to uh, what was remaining was just 40,000, and the owner, the man who bought the Okada for him, water seizing the Okada from him. So the boy decided that, okay, what should I do? After paying about 270 something, he decided that he should sell the machine and pay the man his balance of 40,000, the leftover he would use for himself. So while he was there, he was with his friends. They butchered my cousin's son, like the way you butcher a goat. By Elsa State Police Commissioner, Mr. Mike Okuli, who confirmed the incident, said the investigation is currently ongoing, while Mr. Okbegboro and another suspect are both in police custody. Perpetrator or perpetrators are in our net who swiftly effected arrest of the suspect and uh, is in our custody undergoing investigation. As the family and the Sagbama community await the outcome of the investigation, they insist that justice must be seen to be done in the matter. The Bible quoted it. If you kill by sword, you die by sword. So if I were the government, this boy should be sentenced to hanging if it is my decision alone. Because we don't like to see this type of thing. And we have not been seeing this type of thing in Sagmama. Even now, some, according to rumors, some people say, hey, they will release him. Uh, the boy, he has connections. Uh, lawyers will go and fight for him. They will release him, all those things. It's annoying. And if actually this boy is released from court or from the police, then they are encouraging the boys to do more. Our son is dead, but justice, we want justice. Inside the Niger Delta. The Ijo Youth Council last week suspended its national president, Comrade Peter Igbifa, for allegedly stage managing his abduction during a protest organized by the youth body over the delayed constitution of a governing board for the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. Comrade Igbifa's suspension came after an emergency meeting of the eastern zone of the IYC in Port Harcourt, where a vote of no confidence was passed in his leadership. The Ijo Youth Council, led by Comrade Peter Igbifa, had on April 26 threatened to carry out massive protests across the Niger Delta should President Muhammadu Buhari fail to constitute a board for the NDDC within four weeks. At the expiration of the ultimatum, Ijo Youths carried out the protest as threatened, while their leader, the IYC president, was nowhere to be found. At an Abuja meeting between Minister of Niger Delta and Principal Officers of the IYC, where concerns of the youths were addressed, Comrade Igbifa was conspicuously absent. During the course of the meeting, news filtered in that the IYC president had been kidnapped in Port Harcourt. To the best of my knowledge, the president was coming for a meeting. He initiated these meetings. He was coming to join the national leadership for this meeting before he was abducted. After taking a critical appraisal of the entire scenario, Eastern Zone of the IYC, which produced Comrade Peter Igbifa as national president, convened an emergency meeting in Port Harcourt. Comrade Igbifa was accused of calling for a protest in which he did not intend to participate and stage managing his abduction. From the inception of IYC, it has never happened for the national president to be kidnapped. It's your youth council work in line with the security agents, agencies. We release kidnappers, we go on the street, we go on the forest, we fight criminalities. 
criminals. We fight cultism. We fight separates. So there is no way any mortal created by man can kidnap an injured son. Moreover, the president of the council, it has never happened before. So based on that, the job people has came on board to say, the IOIC president should set aside. The job who came up with the resolution that Honorable Deacon, Deacon Peter Timothy Befa should be suspended. Upon passing a vote of no confidence in Comrade Igbifa, Eastern Zone of the IOIC appointed Israel Fubara, officer in charge of mobilization and strategic planning, to act as national president of the IOIC. A vote of no confidence was passed on Peter Timothy Igbifa. For now, we have an acting president, which is the person of Honorable Comrade Israel Fubara. In the meantime, Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Goswil Akpabio, has commended Ijo youths for staying action on their protest while assuring them that a governing board will be constituted to pilot affairs of the NDDC as soon as ongoing forensic audits of the Commission's activities are concluded in three months. Due to logistics reasons beyond the control of the Ministry, the six months earlier slated for the exercise to complete could not be met. And as a result, the forensic auditors have requested for an additional three months to enable them to submit their final report. All things being equal, in three months from today, Mr. President will be availed the final forensic uh, audit report, whereupon he will now empanel or inaugurate the board so that we can reposition the NDDC. Efforts to reach suspended president of the IYC were unsuccessful as he failed to respond to several phone calls and text messages sent to his phone. Inside the Niger Delta. Introducing from the heart of Nigeria's Niger Delta region, a residential estate like no other, Victoria Creek Gardens Estate, VCG2 Airport Road, Patakot River State. A blend of aesthetics, functionality and simplicity built into 600 units of safe and comfortable accommodation. Located in an urban serene environment, VCG2 Estate is just 5 minutes away from the Patakot International Airport. It features an already built police station, a shopping more hospital, hotel, cinema, club, gym, playground, and many other facilities for your comfort. Purchase a home at our irresistible offer today for you and your family, or just simply invest in our real estate for a fantastic return on investments. For more information, call us on 070-410-01558 or visit our office at Plot 14 Woji Road, GRA Phase 2, Patakot, Victoria Creek Gardens Estate, Oasis in the Garden. I know people, an ancient collection of tribes, a civilization that spawned magic from bronze, a people of culture and heritage reclaiming their civilization from the sea of self-doubt, one idea at a time, every river feeding an ocean like believers to a dream, every legacy has its story and yours is about to begin. Heritage Bank, your timeless wealth partner. Azekiel Group, oil and gas, dredging, power and air transportation. Azekiel Group, petroleum product sufficiency, energy sustainability and infrastructure development. The countdown to the coronation of Prince Sholai Miku as the 21st Oluwafori has started. This followed the official announcement of the date of coronation by the chairman of the Oluza Advisory Council and Iyashere of Wari Kingdom, Chief Johnson Amashunelege. Monday, 5th of April 2021, Prince Sholai Miko was introduced to the Shekri National Assembly as Ulu Desi. Monday, 10th of May 2021, Prince Sholai Miko performed the Iken rites, which saw him moving the royal remains of Ugyame Ikenwale from Ode Shekiri to Ijala, where he was interred. Same day, the Olu designate commenced the Idaniken rites of seclusion for three traditional months. What is next is the coronation upon completion of Idaniken. 
According to the Yashara of Wari Kingdom, Chief Johnson and Marshal Relegi, the Ishakiris have now decided on a date for the coronation of Omoba Shola Emiko, as well as funeral festivities in honor of the late Ogame Ikenwale. The barrier for our late Olu Ogame Ikenwale, we commence on the 18th of June. 2021. 18th of June will be for accommodation service. The traditional barrier will commence 19th of June 2021 and it's going to last for 14 days. The final day will be on the 2nd of July 2021. And also, the Olu designate Omobashola um, Miko will be crowned on the 21st of August 2021. Chief Amashun Relege, who confirmed that the missing 410 year old crown is yet to be found, said the coronation will still go ahead even without the missing crown. Uh, the crown is not a problem to this process. If we have the crown, fine, because the issue is between Shekiri and Shekiri. So we don't want the issue to escalate. We don't even want the issue to go to court. We've given enough time to the people to return it peacefully. If they are returned, we won't tell the police to prosecute them. But if they fail, come 21st August 2021, Shola will be crowned. Prince Ginoa, the first Olu of Wari, was not crowned with uh, that, uh, that crown. Even Ijijen, Eriame, Esige, most of the king, we have other beaded cap. We have other crowns that we can use. The one they took is just one among ten. So, plus the crown, minus the crown, 21st August 2021. Prince Shola Emiko will be crowned as the 21st Olu of Wari. In the meantime, popular TV evangelist Stephen Bejero had called on those who took the crown to return it or face dire consequences. From all indications, it must come out. That crown must come out. There's nothing any man can do with it. Because whoever does it must die before his time. Whoever the house it is will not know peace. And the Shekiri, they know what to do to bring the crown out. The Shekiri themselves, those of us who are intelligent, who are taught the history of the Shekris, who knows the, the spiritual background, the physical background of the Shekris of the Warrior Kingdom. They know what to do, that in seven days that crown must come out. The royal crown, a gift from the King of Portugal, was reportedly removed from the Olu's palace during a burglary incident in March this year. Inside the Niger Delta. State governments in Nigeria's south-south geopolitical zone have been called upon to establish and finance cooperatives to cope with global financial meltdown occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. The call was made by participants at the first South-South Geopolitical Zone Financial Cooperative Leadership Conference in Yenago at the Bielsa State Capital. Correspondent Lovely Ofigo completes the report. The theme of the conference, Repositioning Financial Cooperatives for Better Performance in the Post-COVID Era, sets the tone for discussions. Participants observed that with dwindling national income, drastic cuts in government spending and increasing rates in job losses, the Nigerian economy has had its fair share of the global economic recession imposed by the COVID-19 pandemic. In view of difficult times witnessed in the public and private sectors, as well as ordinary citizens, state governments in the South-South geopolitical zone were enjoined to establish and finance cooperatives to maintain regional financial buoyancy. In Kenya, I have seen where cooperative societies are buying over banks. To our leaders, to our governors, I'm equally encouraging them to see to our need to ensure that they empower us through grants, loans. By so doing, they are teaching us how to fish instead of eating fish. Nobody, and I repeat, nobody in the world, no country in the world can survive without cooperative because it's self-managed organization, owner-user-managed organization. 
You are the owner, you are the user, you are the manager. Participants at the conference include cooperative leaders in the South-South geopolitical zone and their counterparts across the country. Resource persons were invited to sharpen their skills in cooperative leadership, which is a necessity in attaining financial freedom. Businesses succeed more when it is partnership. In this our climb, we always tend to be individualistic in business. And that's why most of the times our businesses don't grow. But cooperative is not an individualistic business. It's a group business. It's a collaboration. And once you collaborate, ideas are put together, funds are being mobilized together, and it helps in stability of the business. The government of our nation right now is emphasizing on giving out soft loans with single-digit interest to people to encourage them to establish their small and medium-scale enterprises and to grow them. But the government at the same time, in trying to do this, is not interested in giving loans to individuals as persons, but rather they are emphasizing on group of persons. And this is where Cooperative Society comes in. At the end of the three-day conference, some of the participants said they were exposed to new ideas about cooperative leadership. This conference we've just attended is an high opener. It has impacted so much on me. And by the grace of God, it will help to turn my society around and to move forward. This um, conference has been very, very impactful and educative. I've learned a lot about leadership and how to train and our cooperative and how to form and do things properly the right ways. Participants at the Cooperative Leadership Conference organized recently in Yenegua described its agenda as timely and capable of addressing the problems of widespread unemployment, poverty and youth restiveness, which in recent times have been on the increase in the South-South geopolitical zone. Inside the Niger Delta This year's Children's Day celebration is perhaps an experience. Kids in three orphanages in Port Harcourt will not forget in a hurry as they benefited immensely from charitable donations made by the Michael Amadi Ou Foundation, a non-profit organization established to give care and support to orphans and other vulnerable children. During the three-day outreach program organized in Port Harcourt, the brain behind the foundation, Michael Amadi Ou, managing director of Victoria Creek Garden Estate in Port Harcourt said it was designed to give back to society. Accompanied by his wife, children, and officials of the Michael Amadi Oru Foundation, business magnate Michael Amadi Oru recently visited three orphanages in Port Harcourt to mark this year's Children's Day celebration. The foundation's first port of call was Lemu Orphanage, where it donated a power generating set, food items, and toiletries to kids at the orphanage to assist in their upkeep. As a demonstration of its love for children, the foundation issued a check of 500,000 naira to proprietor of the orphanage, Samuel Vopnu, to offset its bill on rent. It's only God Almighty that can reward what Amadi Foundation have done here today. As he has done this to Lemu Charity Foundation today, God himself will personally take care of him and the foundation. Few months back, when it visited Divine Benevolent Care Orphanage, the Michael Amadi Oru Foundation discovered that facilities at the orphanage were dilapidated and consequently promised to carry out renovation works on it. As part of Children's Day celebration, the foundation commissioned the renovation project and presented a check of 500,000 naira to cover cost of renting the facility. Food items and other daily necessities were donated to children at the orphanage. There are so many vulnerable children out there looking for succor, looking for help. If we are able to bring them out of the street, take them back to school, I, want to t I believe that uh, the vices we are seeing today will drastically reduce. I want to thank you because I know that God will use you, use our organization and others to meet up the needs of vulnerable children. I feel so happy and I want to say a very big thank you to the organization that sent it to us. The recent three-day outreach organized by the Michael Amadi Oru Foundation was rounded off at the Saviour's Orphanage home run by four siblings who took over its management upon the demise of their late father. Proprietress of the Saviour's Orphanage, 
Joy Isaac said in addition to donations made by the foundation on Children's Day, it had earlier refurbished the facility. Giving this place a facelift has been one of our greatest burden and we are really happy that someone was able to do it for us because every other person that comes to the home will be like, wow, this place is looking fine now and at least you cannot stay and take pictures. In a chat with Inside the Niger Delta, Mr. Michael Amadi Oru, Managing Director of Victoria Creek Gardens Estate in Portacot and his wife Ebere said reaching out to orphans and the less privileged was their own way of marking this year's Children's Day celebration. This outreach was to mark the Children's Day and to show love and put smiles to a lot of people and um, so far we it has given us joy to see how people react and the joy that everything we shared with them has brought to them. We really encourage people to reach out to these children. They don't have where to get these things. No matter how little it may seem to you, it goes a long way to these kids and to the heart of these kids. The Michael Amadi Oru Foundation was established in 2018 to cater for orphans and other less privileged children. It intends to build its personal orphanage in no distant time and reach out to more vulnerable children in society. Inside the Niger Delta. Well, with that report, we'll draw the curtain on the program. Inside the Niger Delta, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil rich region, will be back same time, same station next week. Until then, you can follow us on our social media handles showing right now on your screen. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel at NDN TV Nigeria. Until next week, I am Mamode Akuga, thanking you for staying with us. Bye for now.